Good morning, everybody. Um, glad that you're here, all you beautiful, wonderful people. Um, what I would like to do with you is uh, create a field with all of us here so we feel each other's hearts. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. So everybody take a nice deep breath all the way in till you feel it in your abdomen. And then let it out all the way out till you feel your abdomen contract. And the next breath we're going to do together. So everybody breathe in. And breathe out all the way out. And then one more breath. your own heart. Feel the energy of your heart expanding, getting bigger and bigger. And let that energy now into your right hand. Into your arm, up into your shoulders across your back, down into your left hand, and feel the energy. Do that one more time till you have it good and strong. Into your right hand, up around, down into your left hand, and back into your heart. Now I want you to imagine this whole room full of people here. And you're going to take that energy that's in your heart and pass it along to each and every person. Look at the person on your right, send it to them. Feel it all the way around. Coming back to the person on your left and then to you. Take a nice deep breath. Make sure your feet are on the floor. And send that energy around one more time. Do you feel it come back to you? Nice deep breath. Pass the energy to your right. All the way around the room. Bringing it back into your left. Look to the person on your right, look to the person on your left, give them a big smile. A smile is like a hug today. Feel all the energy coming into your heart. And lighting up all your systems. Take a nice deep breath. And settle into your heart now. And breathe. See how big your heart is, how big it's glowing. One more deep breath. and smile at everybody you can see.
Well, good morning, everyone in the U.S., and good after good afternoon, everyone in Europe. Um, if you don't know her, that was our in, intrepid shoes filmin, who is a, a teacher and facilitator and practitioner and all around well-known person that we all support systems and heart thread. My name is Lauren Liberty. I'm also a practitioner of heart thread and a facilitator of some of the other um, programs that Soul Support Systems offers. I'm here on the East Coast of the United States in Connecticut. And, um, and I just want to welcome everybody that's here. I don't, at some point, you might want to go into gallery view and just see all of the, the wonderful faces. We have people throughout um, the United States and then in England and Hungary, Canada. And um, I don't know, we, we may have people in France and Belgium and places like that. I'm not sure we do. Yeah. So it's always exciting for me to um, imagine us around the globe or if we've almost got it surrounded now. So, so welcome. Um, so before we start, um, I just want to take a minute to have you tune into the group that's here and shoes got us all tuning into our hearts together and just take a moment to tune in and see if you could sense the field the heart field that we have together so let's just bring attention to that and if you want you can close your eyes and ask yourself what does it feel like to be in the group here Can you sense the field? Is there any difference between this field and any other field you may have been in? And then also, um, how do you, if you do sense the field, how do you know that it's here? Where do you get that information? Where does that knowing come from? And then you can come back. And as they say, I want to just put a pin in that. Um, the reason I bring it up is because that's, uh, that's the level we're going to be operating at today. So this kind of sense of coming in and out of the knowing in our own hearts and paying attention at, uh, at that level. So I just want to keep that in mind. So today is a day when we celebrate the heart and its capacity to anchor us in our being, bring us knowing, and connect us authentically with each other. And then when we do that, it helps to move us clearly, safely, and joyfully forward in the world. Lauren, Lauren, sorry for interrupting, but there's a, in the chat, it says that there's no translation at this uh, moment. So I just want to go check if Katya is there. Okay, I don't see Katya. So can she you left. She okay. left. So can you quickly put me in the French room? I'm gonna translate. Please. Okay. And if you can start back the, the first two minutes, you say, so they really get it all. Thank okay. you. I'm just going to do a little test, okay? Mm -hmm. we... Oui, on t'entend bien. Le son n'était pas bon tantôt, c'est pour ça que je suis retournée en anglais, mais continuons. Okay. We're good. Okay, so I, uh, I'm Lauren. I'm on the East Coast of Connecticut. And today is a day when we're celebrating the heart and its capacity to anchor us in our being, bring us knowing, connect us with each other, and then move us forward joyfully with freedom, with a sense of safety and trust in the world, which these days has been feeling a little bit chaotic. So our hearts have always sustained us. 
And I think I can speak for the organization for soul support systems when I say that we believe that the best way forward now, um, individually and collectively, is through listening to the guidance of the heart. And, and I guess that was the best way forward at any time, but especially now when the world is shifting a whole lot and our ground is not feeling as secure, the heart is where we're going to find our security and our ground. So for the next seven hours or so, we're going to be playing with that because of course the heart is very profound, but it's also very playful and joyful and feeling into what the heart has to offer, what it has to say, and um, how we can work with that information. In addition, Soul Support Systems has a modality called HeartThread um, that has developed its own organization, HeartThread International. And HeartThread util utilizes the capacity of the heart to come into the moment and dissolve patterns that don't align with our being. And by dissolving those patterns, it brings us freedom and joy to live from our essence. So this simple but deep modality has expanded on the waves of the one heart that we all share to the point at which we have dozens of practitioners in the US, the UK, uh, Portugal, Hungary, Canada. We have a gentleman in Rwanda who was trained. So like I said, we're starting to circle the globe. There are numerous teachers and um, many of the people involved in HeartThread you'll, you'll meet today throughout the day. There are trainings in North America, Europe and over Zoom. And um, the unique thing I find about HeartThread is that it's, it's very organic and it and it seems to have spread on the heart without kind of anybody controlling it. So all of the different pra unique practitioners have, have worked it into their lives so that there are these unique programs that have been developed with children, with horses that we're going to be lucky enough to experience today um, in the UK. There are people who have worked with veterans, um, people who incorporated into their massage therapy practice, addiction counseling, uh, family, school systems. And today we'll be experiencing different applications for it and also have the opportunity to receive individual sessions and also um, learn ways that you can bring it home and bring it into your families and also um, recognize how keenly you already connect um, with the one heart. So heart thread, inter so in addition to celebrating the heart, we celebrate the organization Heart Thread International, which is a satellite of soul support systems and all of the unique individuals who are a part of that organization. Okay. So a little bit about the heart. So I'm going to make the statement, our hearts bring us a profound connection to all of life. So I'm going to ask you again to just feel into that statement and you can close your eyes. And even you can say it out loud, everybody's muted. My heart brings me a profound connection to all of life. You put, if you put your hands on your heart, you might even feel it a little bit more. And I know that there's, if not all of you believes that there's at least a part of you that understands that that is a true statement. And so my question is, how do you know that? And where does that truth come from? My heart brings me a connection to all of life. Where, how do you know that true, that that's true? So the understanding of that truth doesn't come from your mind. It comes from an experience beyond your mind. And so you, you can come back to the room, uh, or you can stay closing your eyes, but um, just understand that we 
have been conditioned to get our understanding. So in our society, we're conditioned to get our understanding from outside of ourselves. And if you think about the sources of truth and understanding in your life, so we, we get it from our society, how we're supposed to act in the world. Our parents tell us right from wrong. Politicians and media outlets give us information. You know, this is what's going on in the world and this is what you pay attention to. And so you can ask yourself, how does that truth hold up? So it, it's not that these sources are always wrong or unloving or somehow nefarious. It's just that that simple act of taking awareness away from your own truth and accepting a truth that's outside of you um, and, and abandoning yourself, abandoning your own essence um, is, is kind of a is kind of a step that we all take as humans that is not necessarily the best things thing for us. In Heart Thread, um, we say that we abandon self authority in our lives. We disconnect from ourselves, and we end up disconnecting from all of life because our heart is how we connect to all of life, and we end up in these cycles of you know, despair or feeling like we're not connected, we don't, we don't belong, we don't know what we want. So um, I just wanted to get back to that, um, that term self-authority. So that is something that we talk about in Heart Thread. Self-authority is the capacity to Find your truth and understanding from inside yourself so that when you step into the world and something comes up and you would like whatever that is, you have a strong yes. And if something comes up that is not good for you, you have a strong no. And you, you know what you want. You know what you're doing. And you walk into the world with uh, showing up completely, completely within yourself, aligned, connected with the earth, connected above, uh, connected with your own essence. So that's self-authority, and that is, is an aspect of the heart. So um, what I would like to do right now, so I, I explained some information, and that's in your head. So what I would like to do right now is go back into our hearts so that you might be able to experience some of this. So if we go back into that space that shoes had us in at the beginning, you can place your right hand on your heart, your left hand on your right hand. Breathe into your heart. Inhale and exhale. And feel your awareness in your heart. We're also going to think of grounding ourselves. So let your feet feel the earth, whether you're sitting and your feet are flat or if you're lying somewhere. Imagine your feet touching the earth and grounding into the core of the earth. And we can, all, we can actually connect with the heart of the Great Mother at the core of the earth and feel the rhythm of her heart moving through us and into our own heart. Connecting us above with spirit. And feel that energy building under your right hand, over your heart. And as we did before, you can feel it in your arms, filling your body,
connecting with each other in the group. In heart threads, sometimes we imagine beautiful threads that move gently out of our hearts, connecting with the hearts of each person. And you can imagine that happening now. So you have a, a thread that moves into another person's thread, another person's heart, and then the next person and the next person. And everyone in our group is moving those heart threads out into everyone else's hearts. And all of those beautiful golden heart threads form, weave together and form a container that we're in. And we're sharing the one heart in our field, in our container. And you can imagine it in the center of us expanding and moving all around us so you can feel this frequency of the heart in front of you, behind you, to the sides of you, above you and below you. Flo has talked about um, that right in the center of the heart, we have a, a place. And if you'd like to move your fingertips to your heart, she calls it the bliss bank. If you, so if you move, you can keep your hands the way they are or move your index and middle finger right to the center of your heart. And right in that center, just beyond your fingertips or your hands, is a little bank of energy. And this bank contains the signature of all the memories you've ever had of oneness. So in this lifetime or any other lifetimes, this is where you're banking that sent that understanding and feeling and knowing about oneness. And you can have specific memories or it may just be the signature of all of those memories. And let's imagine sending that oneness out on our heart threads. So our field contains all of our knowing about oneness. And tune in again to that sense of knowing or sensation or feeling of our field. And notice if our field changed at all. And whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes and, and I may be spotlighted, but if you ever go into gallery view, you can look around at all the faces and see if it's just easier to connect to people. What is that like? So um, I like to think of the heart as a portal. Now, this is not something that comes from soul support systems. This is my own thing. But the reason I like to do that is because uh, we, we like to, you know, in these, in these metaphysical spiritual groups, we like to go to power places on the earth that are portals to and put ourselves there so that we could connect to something special or we look at time and numbers and here's a portal for this energy. 
But the truth is we have incredible portals that we walk around with all the time and that's our heart. I think of the heart as a portal. And, um, you know, the first way that the heart is a portal is that it is the, the center of our body, the center of our, our chakras. So where our upper chakras are all related to spiritual energy, the lower chakras are related to how we process physical energy. And with it right in the center, our heart is kind of the mediator of that. So this is a place, um, it's a portal where we can understand how to be spirit in form, which is really the incredible unique thing about us is that we, you know, some, sometimes we want to go and just be spiritual all the time, or there are other people that just want to be physical, but we have this incredible job of bringing spirit into form and the heart is the portal where we can understand how to do that. It has all the answers there. Um, <clears throat> our heart is a portal for our truth. So remember, I said we, we go outside to find understanding. Um, but the truth is, and hopefully you'll really feel this today, that when we go into our hearts, we can find all the answers for ourselves. And then the other thing, so you may have sensed it in um, the little meditation we did, but um, if you think about what it's like when we go into our hearts, the first thing we touch is some gentleness and, and um, you might start feeling some compassion. And as you go a little deeper, you find um, you touch love, you start feeling unconditional love, and that's love without the conditions of the world. It's just phew, energy flowing out. And you could think of connecting with the eyes of an innocent child looking up at you that hasn't had all of that stuff piled on him or her, um, being with a beloved pet or a loved one. And as we do that, our emotion softens and becomes more still. And it kind of comes around us and, uh, it comes together, it, it, it gets kind of a nice, comfortable field of our emotions. And then our, uh, our mind surrenders. So um, the mind stops needing to tell us what's going on. It, it doesn't need to keep us safe. We are full, happy, and safe in the present moment when we're in our hearts. We know what's true. So this is the, <clears throat> the next thing I like to understand about the heart is that it's actually more powerful than the mind. And um, to me, that's really the paradox of our experience of life. And that is that in order to go into the heart, we have to be vulnerable. And we are most powerful, we are most in our power when we're in our hearts. And so that we're most powerful when we allow ourselves to be vulnerable. And, and you think about the world, and it's all about who has power, who's disempowered, how do I get power, how do I do this? And, and you know, this is what I mean when I say the way forward is in understanding this about ourselves, that we can come into our, our vulnerability and into our hearts, and we're actually more powerful. And, and dare I say, this is part of the teaching of the horse that we're going to um, touch into later on. The horses are prey animals, and so they profoundly understand this, and, and um, we'll have a chance to kind of explore that with them, I believe, I hope. Um, so, uh, the third thing, the heart is also a portal to the heart of the one. So you may have felt this when we did the meditation, when we connect our hearts, there's the sense that my heart is the same as your heart is the same as his heart is the same as her heart. 
is the same as the heart of the ocean, is the same as the heart of the horse, is the same as the heart of the world. So in this space of the heart, we can connect with each other authentically. There's no hierarchy of power. We're, we're all in our power. We learn to trust. We learn safety. And we feel a part of everything. We, we know we belong. You know, the, the, the heart is where we find our knowing. We belong. We always belong. But when we come to the heart, we know we belong be, because we do. We know what's true. So, um, the, the, the last thing I wanted to say, the last portal, and in, in order to talk about this, I wanted to talk about the modality of heart thread. So in heart thread, we have the opportunity to, to explore those patterns that um, we have taken on from the world, from you know, our not trusting our own knowing or not having a context to understand what the world has given us. And we ha get these patterns in our fields and in our bodies that don't align with our essence. So in Heart Thread, we have the opportunity to um, uncover those patterns and dissolve them. So um, the last portal, the last way that the heart is a portal is that it, it is a portal to our past and our future. So it's, I like to think it's a portal to time. That makes it sound really exciting. But it, in Heart Thread, you'll see, we can travel back to different times in our life that these patterns had been put into our system and start to uncover them. So any trauma from the past, hurt from the past, you can, um, you can, can help to be dissolved in heart thread. So that is all I had to get us introduced to the heart. I'm going to turn it over to either Flo or Shoes, who will be talking about heart thread and getting us grounded. Thank you very much. Let me just. Okay, I think I'm here. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. So I'd really like to welcome all of you today. This is our first international experience of HeartThread. And we have many facilitators here and many participants. And we're going to do our best to give you the most full experience possible of this amazing modality. Some of you know how this came about. And so I'm just going to... Um, to talk about it a little bit for those of you who might not know. I was about, I don't know, I think in my 40s when I started to do uh, metaphysical work. And Heart Thread came from one of my guides whose name is John Henry. And John Henry was actually one of those individuals who was multifaceted. He could be in more than one place at a time, even when he was in a physical body. And in around 2005, he began to speak to me about a process of the heart that he felt could be brought together and opened out to uh, because he has this idea that the heart itself contains all the love that we ever want to experience. Uh, that it contains every single aspect of our consciousness that we're endeavoring through religion and spiritual practice to actually embody. So if we could think about it like we're trying to be more loving, we're trying to forgive, we're always wanting in some way to give an experience to 
this foundation of everything um, so that we can begin to feel more spiritual, more together, more loving, whatever it might be. And the work of Heart Thread is actually telling us that everything we're searching for is already inside us. It doesn't actually work against us in the way that we think it does. You know, when the world is telling us to do everything the world is telling us to do, the heart says, wait a minute, you already have the truth. You already have everything you need inside of you. Um, you don't have to believe a particular principle or try really hard to fix things or change yourself because you are already created in that image of that perfection of the heart. And when Lauren took us into the bliss bank, what started to happen, you know, when we were working with this uh, through some of the uh, Nameless Ones experiences, we realized that all the love and joy we've ever felt is in our heart. And when we open our heart, that consciousness really begins to spread, not just through our own physical cells in our body, but can connect into any heart that we want to experience. Anytime we focus from the heart, all life is part of that. And so in the self-authority of the heart and in the bliss bank inside where we have this capacity to understand deeply that we are joyful beings, we begin to feel how we can take these layers off that have been in some ways brought together from the world and we can begin to actually understand more deeply that there's nothing wrong with us. It's just that we haven't been taught that we're already in that joyful space because of all the things that get crowded on top. So in Heart Thread, we take off all those things, uh, patterns, things that we have believed about ourselves or been conditioned to understand is our reality or our MO or whatever. And we begin to uncover that experience. And in Heart Thread, it's a very short amount of time that's necessary before we begin to feel more space in our body. We actually begin to feel like we have the opportunity to feel that joy inside because there's not as much covering it over. There's not as much establishing it in a, in a way that has some kind of a, um, a definition to it, you know, um, that relates to the outside world. So what we do today is, first of all, we're going to work um, in a little while with the horses. And I have been to, uh, to this beautiful Hartshore herd, and we're going to work with uh, Dawn Oakley Smith and her team, Anna Sakara and Gabby particularly. And we're going to be opening our hearts to them. So this is going to be um, an experiment that um, we're all going to enjoy together. And I think there's 10 horses, we'll see when we get there. But the idea is that we are relating from this field that Lauren was talking about so that we can actually experience that there is a connection, interconnection between us, our hearts, and the horses' hearts and the horses. And I have trained with these horses and other horses. And what the horses teach us is what a field really is. There's sometimes when we put the horses, you know, one horse in a pen, and then we go in one at a time. And the instructions are that we move into the experience of the horse by watching how the horse responds to us moment to moment and also what it is that we actually feel in our bodies. And if we can coordinate our response and the horse's response so that we can feel the layers of their field. And the layers of their field are really indicative to us, very clear for us, because they'll twitch or they'll do something with their tail or their ear or something, or they'll move away, you know, whatever. And when we feel that we are approaching that space or layer in the field, we sigh and step back. And that's what Lauren was talking about. 
the energy of the heart is then conveyed because the mind isn't going, I'm going to go saddle you, or I'm going to go take you for a ride, or I'm going to do this or that. Instead, there's this sensation of connection with how they're feeling about us and if we're being congruent. So one of the things that we're going to work with when um, we come together with the horses is experiencing our field as more congruent. And that means that what we feel inside and outside is the same. And that's what the horses teach us. They teach us that if we're pretending to be okay, but we're really scared, because as Lauren said, they're prey animals, they're gonna, their antenna is going to go up. Like something's coming that isn't coherent, that isn't in that field of congruence. And so immediately we begin to sigh and step back to convey to them, yeah, we're going to settle here. Before we move towards you, we're going to settle again. And every time we take a step, we're going to make sure that we are settling, that we're in that space of interconnection together, and that there's this awareness of your presence and your space and what you need, and there's an awareness of what I need and how I'm responding to the moment. And so in this heart thread work, it's the same thing. We're working with human hearts most times, heart to heart. But what happens in that moment is that we are sensitive to what your heart needs, just as we're sensitive to the heart of the horse, and you become sensitive to our heart. So the threads of the heart actually initiate this weave, like a thread. And when we thread our hearts together, we actually have in my experience, the same values, the same heart connection intention, the same fears, the same challenges, because all of us are in that space of the life, life field where each of us is responding to what's around us and within us at the same time. So what we do in this process is to come together so that we can establish individually and collectively a kind of new earth re recognition or response so that each of us is available to more than our own thinking, our own patterns, our own conditioning, and we come together in a way that opens new fields of awareness and understanding and also so that each of us is able to be present in the world. Because if we're not in our heart, we're not present. If we're not in our feet, we're not present. So we begin to learn how congruence is primary to the foundation of all that is, to, to the spaces of truth that we know exist and we want to tap that ourselves. We want to open unto that with all of our relations. And we also endeavor to feel together that it's always like life is with us, even if we're not looking at another person or connecting to an animal, that somehow our heart has the capacity to feel life all the time. So just for a moment, let's imagine that we can take this field around us and extend it another three feet. Okay, so just feel that for just a moment that you can actually extend your field three feet. This is just your conscious aura. And then settle in that and breathe, just breathe. Nice deep breath. Now that's your field, okay? So let's take our heart and fill our whole field. So let's fill our field three feet around us, in the back, in the front, in the sides, below and above. And imagine that your heart is now going to fill up that field.
Now breathe that heart field more strongly as if the air around you and that heart energy is just flowing in and out through your heart so that actually you are broadcasting the vibration of your own heart into the world around you. Now imagine that in that field with you are those you love. Maybe for me, uh, my granddaughters come first in that field. So bring your granddaughters or your grandsons or your children or your spouse or a significant other or a parent or an animal, whichever. Bring that individual or that life force energy right into your heart field. Now feel how your heart opens more when there's someone there with you. Someone you remember loving you so deeply. Or a time when you felt comfortable, completely in alignment with another person. And feel that energy of sharing your heart. Feel that grow. Feel it open everything inside you to the magic and miracle of your own ability to love because it's always there, it's always present. And then add some more people and maybe make your field six feet wide now so that in preparation for going with the horses, we're each taking this field already opened with our heart, already opened with love because we know what that feels like. No matter who has brought it, we know it's been there. And it is there. And we can open and extend it and expand it and include anyone and anything in it anytime we want. So just add more members of your heart field. You feel your heart resting because it's so open that it feels heard, it feels recognized, feels present with every breath, every awareness, every truth. Now we just take a moment and imagine that we're hugging. Our, our arms are huge, you know, we're gonna hug everyone in our heart and we're gonna bring our field now closer together, maybe right back into our own experience of our physical heart, right hand on our heart, left hand on our right hand. And imagine everyone in there with us now in our heart, living in our heart, Supporting us in always having our heart open and trusting this part of us that is magical and expansive and we just want to also recognize for a moment that our heart is big enough to open to anyone 
at any time without harming or hurting us. So right now we could open our heart to someone who has hurt us, someone who has misunderstood us or even betrayed us. And we can feel that there's room in our heart to have enough love that all of that separation disappears and we're available to the heart of the one and we're able to literally open to all life regardless of the circumstance or any memories that are there, we're just present now, right this moment, with our heart space. So settle there very clearly and deeply. Ah, all right. So in preparation for our time with the horses, there are facilitators in England who have been certified as teachers and practitioners of heart thread. And what we're going to do together is take this individual and group field and we're going to surround the horses with that field when we're instructed to do so because Dawn uh, Oakley Smith is going to now lead us in prepare, preparing and uh, preparation for the horse connection. And what we're going to do is have time with the horses so that you can begin to feel that resonance with them. And they're now preparing, I can see, to. <laughs> To come together with us and after this we'll have a sharing they're now in what's called the tack room and they're going to share with us afterwards and we're going to share our experience with them so we'll have time with them and with the horses and then we'll have time to actually begin um, to share our experience and so I think we'll just I'll mute and go away and you guys can take over Hi everyone, I'm Dawn and I'd like to welcome you to virtual England, virtual the Cotswolds in February. So outside the weather is really quite atrocious. So you will be able to feel very lucky and fortunate that you have stayed in the warmth and comfort of your own home and that it is us that's out here battling the elements. And in the doing of that, I'd like to invite you to notice when, when I introduce you to the horses, the invitation is to notice how they are managing the elements. And I would like to invite you to appreciate the age of this species. Horses have walked the earth for 50 million years. Our species, compared to them, is a baby. We've been here for maybe one and a half million years. So the horse knows far more profoundly than us how to live on the planet. The horse is deeply conscious of the tides of the planet, of the elements, of the way the wind blows and the rain falls, the feel of the earth beneath their hooves. 50 million years of knowledge and wisdom have been born into this species. So I invite you to be in the awareness of that as we go, as we go out um, to meet the horses. So you're gonna see 10 horses today, 
Altogether, I am custodian of 18 horses. The 10 horses that you'll meet today are the core of, of the Hartshaw herd. And um, the work that we do, how I like to describe the work that I do here with these horses is I am doing a little bit to redress the imbalance that we experience as human beings in this world. And in the preparation of me, of me speaking in this moment, I've actually received quite a powerful message from the horses. And it's not meant to be inflammatory or provocative in any way. But what they would like us to know is that, is that the turbulence that we are experiencing now in our lives is no different from the turbulence we have ever always experienced. When we first stepped out of our unevolved state in, in, into the first moment of a, of a higher consciousness, there was suffering, there was turbulence. It's the same. The horses want us to know that. They, they are living always in the present moment. And, for that, and, and so my invitation for you today is to, is to notice how they are, how they live and breathe in, in, in the present moment. They, they are masters of, of, of that, of living in the present. And also what, I, what I'm becoming aware of in these days is that perhaps of all the animals that we are currently in relationship with, it is the horse that is most adept at taking us into, into our heart space. There's a scientific explanation for that and that has to do with the size of the horse's heart in relation to his body and and the limbic field he sh the horse shares a very similar similar limbic system to, to us except it's larger and the dog the dog is very present with us isn't he he's very he's in he's in our he's in our space immediately but the horse has, has a bit of a distance, a bit more containment. And yet we are able to connect with and reach the horse in a way that we cannot connect and reach with the whale or the wolf or the lion. And their relationship with humans is a very old relationship. There's a poem that's written about um, by a wartime poet called Edwin Muir. It's called The Horses. I invite you to look it up because it's a very beautiful description of what has happened in our relationship with the horse. How they came into a relationship with us and then we took them into war and we put them to, 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 to work on the land and we, and, and, and we did not treat them well because we, we knew no better. But now that relationship is coming full circle and we are entering a much more healing relationship with them. You know, they, they have always known that relationship, but we forgot it for a while. But we're coming back into a memory of that. And I feel that that, that is, is a, growing, um, a growing part of our consciousness. Our hope. Okay. Um, so hello, my name is Anna Sakara. Um, I've been working with Dawn for many years and Flo for, for many years. And we've developed this system um, of connecting and working with the horses uh, alongside the development of the soul support systems. And so this way of being, of working and of allowing the horses to present and to show up and to assist us as human beings to be able to integrate and to be able to feel and to be able to open and be at ease and we called it ease and this stands for equine assisted soul experience and so we've been running these for many years and um, recently as doing the easies it was pointed out that within the soul support systems uh, methodology, Flo was bringing in heart thread as a way to integrate and a way to listen and a way to get the intent 
of each participant very clear because it really helps to drop beyond the mind and to drop into the body and to listen to the heart for these inner messages. And so we started playing around with that idea and integrating it with the horses and bringing the horses present when we were doing the heart thread work. And so this has developed out of that work and how we've been working with the horses. And one of the major um, things that we found and one of the major ways that Dawn works with her herd is through choice. So her herd are kept naturally outside 24 seven. They have the choice to come inside and be in shelter if they need to. They have the choice to be outside on the field. So shortly you will see us working with that choice and working with those connection of horse and seeing which horse is choosing and which horse is showing up. And Dawn will be uh, working with the camera to allow that sense of choice. But I think Gabby is going to explain a little bit more about how we understand our hearts red connection with horses. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Dawn. And um, well, today's going to be a bit of an adventure to be honest, <laughs> and uh, all because of the wet. We've had quite an adventure <laughs> putting the whole thing together because of this um, rather interesting weather that the, the universe has decided to present us with today. And um, one of the things that that thread offers is truth. It's about truth and the weather is about reality the weather is about truth horses are about truth and that's why they the, they lend themselves to this work so our we've said a little bit about where it comes from you've had a lot about heart thread in the in the introduction to um to the day so i'm going to say more as in let's be curious Let's the day unfold. So I'm actually going to tell you what's going to happen, a bit about what's going to happen. And bear in mind that with any plan, <laughs> it could be changed at any point. <laughs> so the plan so far is that we're going to give you a little um, a way of connecting with your body, really becoming present in this moment. There's been a lot said that this today already about being present. So we want to be present. We want to be present with ourselves and our experience. Dawn is going to, um, to guide us through that. We're, we're then going to um, take you out and, and show you the land, show you where we are, so you get a real sense of um, what the land is saying, what the, um, what the weather is like, what horses are like, what they, they say, are they on the other side of the field? Are they, you know, just anything, just noticing, connecting, introducing you to, and just allowing you to be in this journey with us. You might want to, you know, if you find yourself shivering, that's just because <laughs> you're really connecting in with us deeply, you know, and it's like, this is a good thing. Um, so have blankets with you because you might need a, maybe an umbrella, um, whatever you need to make yourself comfortable. Don't worry about <laughs> so, so, um, so then after that, we're, Dawn is actually going to take us and we're going to have a little bit of an introduction just, just to let meet the horses. And then we're going to just see what unfolds. We're going to allow the horses to teach us about heart thread. And, and, and many of you know what heart thread is. Some of you may be new to heart thread. But we'd rather than talk to you about what it is, we're just going to... Um, allow the work to present itself to you. So there will be at some point, towards the end, we'll have a point of sharing, asking questions. So if anything, um, if there's anything that comes up for you, if there's anything that you wanna ask, just, just make a note of it or hold, hold it in your, um, in your awareness. Now, I do also want to say that, that part of our team is online. So we have Cher and Carol and Lucia who are online. They are a part of the team. Um, and they've just chosen um, to access it well. They've, they've had to act to us. We were fortunate to be able to come and have the time to be able to be on the land. 
So just to let you know, there is a, there's, a, there's a whole team of us. So uh, we also have uh, Ruthie here, and Anna's just going to introduce her. So there's Ruthie, part of the team. Mm. And we have Jane, who comes and goes as part of our team, because she's living in different countries. <laughs> so, and we also have a very special with us today. I don't mean Frodo the dog. Um, I mean, we have Izzy, who is um, yeah. lending her, and is just going to turn it down. So <laughs> there she is, and she is taking photographs and films, so you may hear some weird noises, and that's her, um, or it's one of us falling in the puddle, one of the two. So what's going to happen right now is we're just going to turn our camera off, and you'll get a lovely picture of horses. That is a picture of Hartshaw and the horses today. And um, we'd just like you to, to start going into um, your bodies, finding your way into your bodies, being in your own heart connection, the beautiful field that's been created today, the, that energetic structure that we're all already in. And, uh, and when we switch our camera on, we're gonna be outside. So we just don't wanna, discombobulate you without see you in a minute. So I would imagine it will take them a few minutes if you'd like to stand or stretch or get something to drink and come right back. Um, just to take a second, a couple seconds to uh, to release any pressure in your body or anything you need. Dawn, can you speak up, sweetheart? We can't hear you. Okay. <laughs> so, just bringing your awareness to your breath. us all to this incarnation. Every living thing breathes. So the in-breath is what you need and the out-breath being away what you're done with. Then allowing your awareness to begin at the top of your head. Noticing your head in this moment. The front, back, Inside your head. There's nothing to fix, there's nothing to change. We're just noticing. Now that your awareness has moved down even through your neck, your throat, and following the line of your collarbone out into your shoulders. Awareness down your arms, into your hands, your fingers, and fingertips. Awareness into your chest and into your heart space. 
just noticing how it feels in the chamber of your heart today. The heart is this incredible organ that pumps life through our bodies in every second, many, many, many years. Also this incredible energetic organ contains so much that is the home of love. Allowing your awareness to rest in the chamber of your heart. And then following the curve of your rib cage out to your spine and the back of yourself. Allowing your awareness to move down your spine. Into your hips and your pelvis. Into the space in the centre of your body sacred space if possible. Where you store your power even when you don't think you have any. Let me breath and light into the sacred space of possibility. Awareness down your legs, your thighs, your knees, your shins and your calves your ankle and into your feet. Feet on the floor of your house, beneath your house, the earth. Deep breath into your connection with the earth. This is the planet. She who accepts all things and turns no one away. A deep breath and deep gratitude to the planet. And just returning to your heart space once more, to the chamber of your heart, allowing yourself to sit there, to notice how it feels, how it looks there. Golden threads, perhaps, that make up your heart. So these threads are moving like seaweed moves in the ocean. Noticing who the Threads are reaching out to in this moment, feeling these golden threads returning to you and others. A deep breath, deep gratitude for this phenomenal organ, the heart. The I Ching says, all are one in their hearts. When one heart suffers, all hearts suffer. So by the same token, if one heart feels love, all hearts must feel love. And from this space, we're gonna turn and look at the horses. Is the core Hartshaw herd? Ten horses. To say something about the land here, I have been custodian of this land for more than 20 years now. But before I was here, in a time before this time, there was a Celtic tribe that lived in this area that was a horse tribe. So just allow your imagination to carry you back maybe to that time when our ancestors walked this land. Perhaps this little piece of land here in England has always been a place of healing, has always been a haven for these incredible creatures. In these days, with myself as the custodian here, 
there are many people who come to receive the medicine of horse for various wounds, various traumas that they may be living with and working with and walking with. We are close neighbors here with Princess Anne, the Queen's daughter, who lives somewhere in that direction. And in that direction, the Queen's son, Prince Charles. So we are surrounded by royalty. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you to each of the horses and I'm going to speak their name. Let the first sight of that horse rest with you and receive the name of that horse. And maybe just notice where in your body the experience of that horse lands. Is, this is Spice. This horse, little mare, is called Spice. Just ever so slightly behind her is the horse called Harry. Harry is a horse that travels into the prisons with me to work with those who are struggling with their choices. This beautiful little chestnut mare is the horse called Star. Here we have the gentle giant of the herd, the newest member, the baby. Name is Oak. An oak has given up an eye. Since he arrived here, he lost an eye. And I think that's because he's destined to look into other dimensions and be particularly helpful with the veterans we work with, those men who have chosen to go to war for their country and to be wounded in that way. This is Taipan, who until Oak arrived was the biggest horse in the herd. Being in the presence of Smarty is like being in a warm bath after an exhausting day. And he is the alpha horse. And here 
Here is Lakota, the alpha mare, the leopard spot Appaloosa. She who carries much ancestral horse energy. She is the alpha mare. Coming, Lakota. Are you coming with us? And here is Carly. In Hindu mythology, the destroyer of ego. And here is Phoenix. <laughs> His hooves are squelching in the earth. And finally, And she came to Hartshaw maybe eight or nine years ago as a gift from a member of Soul Support Systems. She came in as a two year old when she was a baby. Here she is now. Off. Okay. What do you have now? So I'm going to take us to the horses that might have messages for us today. Toy pan, and I'm going to do a little heart red experience with my pan. So, if you'd like to put your right hand on your heart and your left hand on your right hand, so allow a thread from your heart to go to the heart of Toy Pan. Always likes to be involved, and Anna's going to show you where about to a bit further forward, a bit further forward. So just imagine the thread, the golden thread, and the light. This field, spending a minute or two being in that connection with time pan. Our energy moving back from you to time pan, from time pan back to you. And being with your experience of that. Now, time pan may already be talking with you. 
many of you may have messages, and if you do, we have strong messages that will So, Gabby, just in case people are having a challenge hearing you, this is Taipan, and Gabby has instructed us to go into our hearts and connect golden threads with the heart of Taipan and see what the connection might bring forth. Thank you. I'm going to be with Taipan just for a couple of minutes, see if he has anything that he wishes anybody to say. So Taipan has a message. You'd like everybody to say out loud to themselves, I open to the many dimensions of being. I open to the many dimensions of being. I keep my feet on the ground while I travel in other dimensions. I am open to my wisdom. Wisdom of the ages. And to the wisdom of the ages. I am pure of heart. I can easily travel the worlds between the extraordinary and the extraordinary. Just a strange one. I do not suffer fools gladly. I do not suffer fools gladly. So we'll all be picking up different things because so many of us are facilitators of this work. So for me, Taipan is saying it's much more simple than you think. It is much more simple than you think. Life is for living. Let yourself live. And please say this sentence to yourself, but out loud. I know my place in the order of things.
I know my place in the order of things. Thank you, Tarika. Gratitude to Taipan for his presence and his messages today. So Mel has presented herself, as she always does. She gladly gives herself to this work. And so connecting with your heart and with the heart of Mark. Being in heart connection with her. So please say, I own the sweetness of my being. I allow my heart to open. And just to let you know that I'm also with Anna Sakara and she may have some sentences from Moss. And you say, I reclaim my innocence. And I walk forth with integrity, play, and love. and be opening to receive your own sentences. And Moss would like you to know that the heart is always present. Love and care is always with you. There is always the energy of care, love, concern and that there's a steadiness to that there's a rhythm to that it does not waver we simply take our attention from that at times Gratitude to Moth for her presence, 
other messages to it. Harry would like to share his being with us this afternoon. So I just like to um before we move on to Harry, beautiful, beautiful Harry, while you are connecting your beautiful heart to our gorgeous Harry, to remind you again that we have our facilitators on Zoom. So um, it may be that Cher or Lucia or Carol have a sentence that they might wish to, to bring for you. So there's just that invitation and just so that you all know. But I'll guide you in connection once to Harry. So Harry says it's very easy to connect to the heart welcomes you. What he likes to say about how welcoming the heart is. Sometimes the messages are just quiet. They are sometimes just for your heart. And the invitation to is to be with the heart. Be with horse. Be with it. And that's what Harry is requesting right now. To just be with him. in companionship lies strength. So we have Harry and Gabby, you're frozen at the moment. Harry was, I felt him saying to us, your heart is as big as mine, even if you're not my size. <laughs> he was offering us this amazing opportunity to feel that our heart is as big as his heart. But just for a moment, let's go into Harry's heart 
remembering him and feeling our own heart and just see how that expansiveness may be experienced in our own heart. And we can imagine that we're at the the land in Hartshore looks like it's raining. It's chilly there. When I was there, the mud was up to my knees. I am short, but it was still very deep. There we are. And hopefully you can see us again. Okay, so we're just going to introduce you to one more horse. How do you make that screen bigger? You can't. How do, why is it down in the corner like that? Ivy, is there any way that we're not spotlighted anymore? Can you back your camera up a little bit? All we can see is you. Can you spotlight us though? Because we're not getting it on big video. It's not coming on our big screen for us. There we are. There we are. There we are. Look at the look at the rain on this coat. If 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 we part the hair, part the hair. How dry underneath that he is. See how dry? How dry his skin is, even though his his coat is wet. That's because this is a horse who is allowed to be naturally in the elements. It is the human temptation these days to anthropomorphize and think that these animals need coats and blankets and this and that. And when we do that, we interfere with the natural action of this, of this coat. And the tail, keeping the butt warm, going down, 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 down to the earth. Thank you, Smarty, for the view of your bum there. <laughs> okay, one more horse. feeling our connection with spice or maybe not mm. <laughs> that was it that was it from spice my, my sense it is we're done we're, we're done, done actually <laughs> one more picture for the coach i can go in mm. so just everybody just Dropping, make sure you're dropping into your heart and allowing your thread of connection to go to the heart of each horse as we move around, preparing ourselves to go back in. Lakota, the alpha mare, whose name means to be friendly. When she first came, she was not friendly. She was very suspicious, and her name was Sue, S-I-O-U-X, Sue. When the white man named Dakota Tribe, he called it Sue, 
and Sue means enemy. So we shifted the lens on that word, turned it to Lakota to be friendly. And when we did that, it changed her perspective on us. And that is spice. Saying farewell. Star saying farewell. And oak. The gentle giant, the one eyed warrior. Oak is a Clydesdale. It's bred in Scotland. His name was Diesel when he joined us, but it's not his true name. It's Oak, the gentle giant. So we are going to re enter the building. And we'll see you again in a break, 15 minute break. We're going to have a bit of a break. Um, yeah. So we'll see yeah. you. Our suggestion is 15 minutes for a break, and then we will join you indoors for questions, feedback. And if you don't need to, to have yourself a break, then just allow yourselves to continue to integrate this experience of being this with the book. All right, so we'll see you in 15 minutes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gabrielle and Dawn and Anna. Beautiful. <laughs>